Do you take resveratrol? If so, do you know exactly how resveratrol works? What resveratrol does to your heart, your brain, your muscles, after you take it? This video is part of our investigation into resveratrol that started with this shocking discovery in Dr. David Sinclair's own study that showed that low resveratrol worked better for longevity than high resveratrol. It's been a complete shock to me as I've been taking one gram of resveratrol on alternate days for three years now. Since this discovery, I've gone over 200 studies on resveratrol and I'm here to tell you that this molecule is much more powerful and complex than I ever imagined. Today, we will continue in our investigation with another fascinating study answering the following questions. Is there additional evidence supporting what we discover in Dr. David Sinclair's study, that lower resveratrol is effective for longevity? Maybe Sinclair's finding was a mistake. Let's see today. We need to figure this one out because this matters the most for our longevity. Also, how does resveratrol affect your heart, your brain, your muscles? And additional mysteries, including the best timing for resveratrol and much more. Let's continue with our investigation into the secrets of resveratrol right now. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. So previously we have shown that Dr. David Sinclair's study showed that between 33 to 89 milligrams of resveratrol based on the academy conversion was the most effective in his study. These low dose resveratrol groups lived the longest than any other group. Let's continue from this point. But you know, maybe it was an unusual result. Do we have other studies to corroborate what Dr. David Sinclair found in his studies. Not only that, we need longevity study that used low-dose resveratrol, so we can verify that low-dose resveratrol indeed helps in longevity. And thanks to Dr. David Sinclair, who spurred a research, a massive research on resveratrol, we have a lot of studies on resveratrol. And especially his study spurred the interest that created another great, fantastic study in 2008 about longevity genes in low-dose resveratrol in mice. Now, I love everything they did in this study, everything, and how the researchers here think. Here is why. First, they put the resveratrol in food, just like what Dr. David Sinclair did in his study. And we know that this leads to the best absorption. So we have one check here. Then they analyze organs that we know resveratrol targets. They analyze the muscles, the heart, and the brain. And they even operated the liver at the end. That's unlike other studies that measure resveratrol impact on the immune system similar to what they did in the CRISPR study I mentioned in the previous video. And third, it's a complementary study to what Sinclair found. Dr. David Sinclair, in his study, let the mice live throughout their entire life. It was a lifespan study. But what they did, at a very old age of these mice, they measured genes of longevity, activations of genes of longevity. This is a fantastic insight and a fantastic screenshot into the genetic expression of mice because of resveratrol. Even better, they compare it to caloric restriction. Caloric restriction is a model that is proven, the most proven model for longevity. So they compare the genetic expression of low-dose resveratrol versus caloric restriction. So this is, gives us insight not just to corroborate whether what we found with Dr. Sinclair was a coincidence, but also to analyze the reasons of what happens behind the scenes in the mice studies in Sinclair. So this way we could understand how resveratrol works in the body. This study is called a low-dose dietary resveratrol partially mimics caloric restriction and retards aging parameters in mice. How low resveratrol they give to them. I'm quoting, this dose is approximately equal to 4.9 milligrams resveratrol per kilogram body weight, assuming a 35 gram mouse. This equals to only 30 milligrams of resveratrol for a 160 pound person. This is how they analyze the mice as I explained. Mice were sacrificed at 30 to 31 months of age. Tissues collected for gene expression analysis. We focused our analysis on three tissues, heart, skeletal muscle, and brain. This is what they found, heart. There were 1,029 genes that were significantly changed in expression with age in the heart. Surprisingly, resveratrol opposed 947 genes of age-related change in gene expression. So we are speaking, we're talking about aging genes that turns on as we age. We don't want these genes to turn on, we want them to be silent. And they also found that this correlated well with what happens with caloric restriction. So resveratrol 
as well as caloric restriction, turn off aging genes in mice in the heart. Then they go to muscles. They found the same thing to a lower extent. Aging resulted in alteration of expression of 515 skeletal muscle genes. 26% of them were significantly opposed by caloric restriction and was virtual. The same result, silencing of aging genes. In the brain, the same result to a lower degree. In the neocortex, caloric restriction and resveratrol significantly inhibited 13% highly significant age-related changes in gene expression. In addition, the researchers also measured the longevity genes, not just aging genes, and they saw the same result. Resveratrol activates certain longevity genes in the same way that caloric restriction does. But the main highlight here is silencing the aging genes. What I also loved in the study, that they also operated the heart and internal organs to see the impact on health span and also on cancer. We're going to speak about this later. But let's see what they found about the condition of the heart. Heart performance in old age. Both caloric restriction and resveratrol supplementation almost completely prevented the age-related decrease in this parameter. Resveratrol mimics the effect of caloric restriction to prevent cardiac aging at both the transcriptional and functional level. In essence, resveratrol helps the heart to stay young both in the performance aspect, but also the genetic expression, which is extremely important. The researchers concluded, our studies suggest that dietary consumption of low-dose resveratrol partially mimics caloric restriction and inhibits some aspect of the aging process. I want to stop here before we continue to gather the insights from this amazing study. So let's connect the dots. What bad diet and a large belly fat does turns on aging genes. And resveratrol turns off aging genes. This study also confirms what Dr. David Sinclair found about CERT-1 activation. CERT stands for Silent Information Regulator. And we can see here evidence how resveratrol keeps those unhealthy aging genes silent. And this explains beautifully how resveratrol is so effective in obese mice. Because not only their diet activates these aging genes, but also their belly fat. And this is very similar to people that you know who have a large belly fat and eat high junk food diet. They benefit the most by resveratrol because resveratrol offset the activation of these aging genes. All these benefits came from low-dose resveratrol, translated to less than 30 milligrams for a 160-pound person. This confirms exactly what Dr. David Sinclair found in his study. We can also conclude that the obese mice, junk food with big bellies, have the most to gain from resveratrol. But as Sinclair found, it won't prevent the excess weight. So resveratrol doesn't prevent us from gaining weight, but it just turned off the aging genes from our bad diet and big belly fat. Another amazing insight that we have is explaining the longevity benefits of the mice who took resveratrol day on and day off, and who fasted in between. Now think about this. How did these mice, on the every other day feeding, consume resveratrol? It was put into their food. So when they fasted, they didn't receive resveratrol, but they did not need resveratrol because the fasting already silenced the aging genes. The, the next day, they overindulged in food. They ate excess amount of food. This is where those excessive meals turns off longevity. But resveratrol was in the right place and the right time to turn off these aging genes. This what gave the reduction in mortality and possibly the 2.5 increase in maximum lifespan. And remember, these mice only consumed resveratrol for half of their consumption days. So that was enough for resveratrol to reduce mortality because it was taken in the right time. Have you wondered about what's the best timing to take your resveratrol? So we got a hint exactly here. This also going to help us later and suggest that the timing that we take resveratrol is critical. Here is a summary so far of these three studies with excellent longevity results. Obese mice, everyday feeding. The most successful dose is 33 milligrams per 70 kilogram person. Every other day feeding, 
has the most successful dose was 89 milligrams for 160 pound person and mice with genetic expression tracked at old age with everyday feeding had a successful dose at 28.5 milligram per 160 pound person. So this is low resveratrol and it's very effective in mice for longevity. So, so far we have greater confidence that what Dr. David Sinclair found in his study was correct. Low dose resveratrol works in mice for longevity. But these, you may say, are just mice. Sure, mice are our evolutionary cousins. But what about us, humans? Do we have any evidence that low resveratrol actually improves longevity? This is not the complete video and it has been taking me so long to record this. And now I've been going over 200 studies to complete this video. Now in the meantime, until the video is gonna be published, I've got a deluge of emails and I didn't want to keep you hanging. So this is the first food for thought. It will help you to digest the rest of the story when you see it. In the complete version, coming soon, I'll take you through my investigation connecting dot after dot after dot. And every dot will give you another astonishing insight, not only about resveratrol, but also about red wine, olive oil, fisetin, conflict of studies in resveratrol, senescent cells, and more and more. And I must thank Dr. David Declare because if it wasn't for him, we would never have had this amount of data to analyze and think about. We don't have that privilege with other supplements in longevity, you should know that. So thank you, Dr. Sinclair, for that. And it's a great opportunity to say thank you so much and how grateful I am for everyone who contributes to my channel via Patreon. The trust you put in me, and with your help, and the energy boost that you give me, you keep me sharp to produce the best videos on this channel. And because of that, I want to do a special thing for you. And I'll release this video to you via Patreon system before anyone else. And it's without ads. You'll get notification from me directly, but of course, a week later, everyone is gonna see the entire thing for free. Until I got this recorded, stay healthy, stay young, and see you in the next video where we uncover the mind-blowing secrets of resveratrol and its polyphenol family.